Tracking a rocket is done with this device here. This is called the theodolite. It measures both azimuth, which is north, south, east, west, and it also measures elevation. Elevation is up and down. So to use this, what we're going to do is we're just going to look through this eyepiece right here, and we're going to just look through there, and it has a couple of uh, sight tubes on it, and we'll just sight it to the rocket, wherever the rocket goes. And then we leave it there, and then we read off the azimuth degrees and the elevation degrees. Usually what we do is we have a set of walkie-talkies and we report those in after the flight to the to the base which is down there. Um, to set these up first you have to level it and that's what these plates are here and on one side of this there'll be a bubble level. Here's the bubble level over here and uh, when the bubble level is level then you know your tracking scope is level. And then once you get it level You'll turn this protractor here to zero degrees, and zero degrees is aimed at the other tracking scope. And there'll be another tracking scope, probably, uh, this has a 600 meter baseline that we're using today, because we're going to go about a thousand feet in the air that we're tracking rockets. So, ideally, uh, so what the, both tracking scopes will aim at each other and zero out so that both the elevation and the azimuth are zero. Actually, it's just the azimuth is zero. It doesn't really matter what the elevation is. And at that point, we're ready to track rockets and the, the base camp where the, the range is, they're gonna tell us when the rocket is ready to launch. And when it's launching, they're gonna th say three, two, one, launch in the, in the walkie talkies. And then we're gonna track how high it goes. And as soon as the rocket is tracked, we're gonna leave everything there, just don't touch anything. And then we report off. Now over here, we have another tracking scope. So we have two at this location. Basically what this is, is two sets of eyes. In case the one person on the one tracking scope misses the rocket, we have another person as a backup. So ideally you want at least four tracking scopes, but you can get away with just two. Um, as long as the people that are operating them have good sets of eyes. Um, and what makes it easy to track is to put tracking powder inside the rocket. Now tracking powder is just basically powdered chalk and you can buy this at a hardware store. Uh, they sell it there for putting uh, for marking lines on the, on the ground. Um, it's powdered chalk. So if you pour the powdered chalk inside the rocket when the ejection charge goes off it pushes that powder into the air and if you use red or orange or a nice dark color it'll make a nice big block in the sky and then you know where the rocket is tracked to. So usually just track until the ejection charge goes off. So now we've seen how tracking scopes work out in the field. So now I want to answer a couple of questions that you still might have. First, where can you get a tracking scope? Well, you're going to have to make one yourself. Uh, this scope here is the, the property of the National Association of Rocketry and they use these for their contests, their national contests. Uh, this just happens to be here in Colorado because we're having NARAM out here this summer. So I have access to take some pictures of it. Um, the only place that I've been able to find plans is in the book Advanced Model Rocketry Second Stage uh, written by Michael Banks. Um, and he's got two editions, uh, the second edition and the first edition. And both of them in the very back have plans for how to use or how to build uh, tracking theodolites. Um, so this is where you will find the plans to build your own. Um, and then another question people have is now with these new altimeters like this one right here, the uh, altimeter one or the perfect flight ELT um, um, 15K, um, how accurate are these things compared to tracking them with a tracking scope? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, these are getting better. These little altimeters are getting a lot better. And the NAR has recently allowed them to be used in competition, which means that they're pretty good. But if you're a teacher in school, uh, going through the math and the trigonometry of tracking a rocket is still a very good idea um, because you have, the kids have to know how they are actually tracked and then how we can compare them with these uh, little altimeters that we have here. Um, so if you have any questions about altimeters or tracking scopes, uh, you can email us here at Apogee Components. Just go to our website 
and click on the contact us uh, button from the uh, from the about us menu um, my name is Tim Van Milligan I'm from Apogee Components our website is www.apogeerockets.com may the winds be light may the skies be blue and may all your rockets fly straight and true